Students always seem to struggle with finding the oxidation state or charge of transition metals. Whether this is ferric or ferrous iron, students always have a hard time with it. So don't beat yourself up if you do. In my previous video, we talked about how you could crisscross those numbers back to determine the oxidation state and then double check the anion. However, that method does not work for everyone. So there is another way to determine the oxidation state of the transition metal. And all it requires is some simple algebra. Iron is a transition metal, so we need to determine the oxidation state or charge of our, of our iron to get the full name of this compound. Elements form bonds to reach their lowest energy level. For ionic compounds, that's to neutralize their charges for the oxidation states when added all together to equal zero. In this course, transition metals will always be paired with elements with known oxidation states or ions that have set charges. Chloride is always a minus one and having three chlorides means that you overall have a minus three charge for your chlorides. Iron has to neutralize that charge. So something minus three has to equal zero. Iron must, in this case, be a plus three. So this would be iron three chloride. Here, iron might have a different oxidation state. So this is iron something oxide. While we don't know the iron, we do know that when added together, all the oxidation states have to equal zero as this is a neutral compound. Oxide is when oxygen develops a charge. Oxygen is always a minus two oxidation state, so three times a minus two. This gives us a minus six overall. There are two irons here that are canceling out that minus six. So two somethings minus six has to equal zero. This must be a plus six, so each iron must be a plus three. Here again, we have ferric oxide, iron three oxide. The same principle applies when working with polyatomic ions. If you have an ionic compound, one in which you have a metal and nonmetals, and there are more than two capital letters if it is not binary, there is a polyatomic ion present. Those polyatomic ions I asked you to memorize because they have known charges. Here we see sulfite. Sulfite is sulfur with three oxygens that have an extra two electrons. Sulfite is a minus two charge overall. So copper has to neutralize that minus two charge because when added together, the oxidation states need to equal zero. So two somethings minus two must equal zero. Those two somethings must be a plus two, so each one must be a plus one. This is cuprous sulfite or copper one sulfite. And one final example, again we see sulfite. We know that we have a polyatomic ion present because we have three or more capital letters. So sulfite is overall a minus two charge. When added together, our oxidation states have to equal zero. So lead must be neutralizing that charge. So something minus two must be zero. Lead must be a plus two, making this lead to sulfite. Hopefully, finding the oxidation state of transition metals, metals not in the first two columns, and metals that are not silver, zinc, or aluminum, those that require their oxidation state in Roman numerals, will be easier for you.